So I was driving along Iowa Avenue in Marshalltown, Iowa. I was westbound driving at about a speed of 40 miles per hour. This road isn't very busy most of the time, so I was just looking around at the buildings off the road as I normally do. I was looking at a hotel or apartment building that has a kind of unique architecture. The building was shaped like a triangle with a cylinder-shaped chimney on the front with a wooden porch and staircase leading to a sidewalk. On either side, there was a space for parking. The thing that caught my eye was a boy that was running down the last few steps of the wooden staircase and onto the sidewalk, headed towards the right side of the building's parking lot. I saw him as soon as I passed a brush just before the property. He was running at a near full speed for his first few steps. Then, he froze in place in running form, completely still. In my head, I was just thinking, oh, it's no big deal, it's just a kid being weird. I then began to slow down as I realized he wasn't moving at all and the form he was in would be very hard to hold for any amount of time. I watched him until I was craning my neck to see him finally take his next few steps towards the parking lot at a full run speed. It felt like an eternity that this boy was frozen in time. I calculated the time by measuring the distance from when I had first seen him in my peripherals until I had begun craning my neck backwards. The distance was approximately 1 mile or 528 feet, traveling at a speed of 40 miles per hour. I could have been watching him for approximately 9 seconds from beginning to end. Until this day, I cannot for the life of me explain what I experienced. I don't like telling this story to my family or friends as I don't want them to think I'm strange or out of my mind. I also don't feel like having to justify my experience and explain what I saw. Words cannot describe the chills that it gave me. Number 2 A few years ago, my grandfather turned 80 years old. For that occasion, we invited countless people including some very distant family members. To add some context here, because of countless divorces and remarriages, my family is very big. As a result, it's impossible to know everyone, and we very often meet some distant family member we've never even heard about in dinners and weddings, etc. Back to the glitch. My parents put me in charge of welcoming the guests when they arrived at our door. At some point, a woman I don't know rings the door, and I open. She greets me, introduces herself as Amelia, and asks where she should put the cake she brought with her. I bring her to the kitchen and discuss with her. She tells me that she traveled all the way from Argentina for this party. I find that amazing and I tell her that George, my grandpa, will be very happy. She then says, um, who's George? And I laugh, thinking it's a joke, and then we go into the garden to join everyone. Her jaw completely drops as she sees my grandpa. She exclaims, Oh, George, what are you doing here? And then hugs him. That was extremely weird because the whole point of this party was George, my grandpa. But we all thought we must have misheard that or she used the wrong words. Amelia then turns around and sees my dad and once again says, I didn't expect to see you here. It's unbelievable. We find that extremely weird but don't give too much thought in it. I ask my grandpa and dad who she is and they tell me it's a distant cousin they hadn't seen in years. In the end, Amelia ends up asking, So, where is Oliver, the groom? We're all thinking she's crazy, but my mom then realizes she's talking about our neighbor Oliver who's getting married and was celebrating at the same time as us. We all start to wonder how on earth she even knew or cared about Oliver. Everyone is super confused. Amelia then asks, So, this isn't Oliver's party? She then goes on to explain that she was invited to Oliver's party who happened to be a childhood friend of hers. We knocked on Oliver's door and as it turns out, they've been waiting for Amelia. After a few minutes of discussion and astonishment, we realize Amelia simply flew from Argentina, walked into the wrong party and reunited with all of our family. Definitely one wild glitch. Number 3 about 15 years ago, my uncle was trapped in an awful marriage. Well, one day my aunt, who lived about three hours away from them, gets a weird call. She answers and all she hears is static. She then hears a special name that only my great-grandmother called my aunt, tell Michael, do not eat the soup. 
no matter what, do not eat the soup. The line then clicks and goes dead. My aunt was freaked out because my great-grandmother had died three years before, but there was no way it could have been anyone else. No one else but her could pronounce the special name that she called my aunt correctly. So my aunt called my uncle Michael and told him what happened, and said at whatever cost to not eat the soup. Well, five minutes before he got that call, his wife had served her homemade soup bragging about how good it was, just as he was about to have some. When he told his wife that he wasn't hungry, she kept insisting that he eat it. After a while of him refusing her nagging to eat the meal, he asked to walk into the kitchen and see what ingredients she had used. She then went ballistic, beating him up and throwing the soup on him, and then locking him outside the house. To this day, he wholeheartedly believes that his wife was trying to poison him, and that our grandmother was warning him from beyond the grave. Apparently, his wife had attempted to poison him before, but as a joke. I guess she was serious that time. There was no way my aunt could have known he was about to eat the soup. My uncle and her weren't on speaking terms at the time, and they lived very far apart. Plus, my aunt never lies, especially about our grandmother, because she was basically like a second mom to her. Definitely the creepiest glitch that I've encountered. Number 4 So here's what happened. About 4-5 to five years ago, I had my last birthday party at a go-karting place. I was getting too old, so this would be my last birthday party at this place. I invited around 7 or 8 of my closest friends and had a pretty small but fun party. Everyone had fun and nothing weird or unexplained happened all these years. That is until a month ago when I realized something that was very off. I realized that two of my closest friends had come to my birthday that day, which was impossible because I only met them two years ago, which was two to three years after my party. This was really weird to me because I clearly remember them being there, us making jokes about the ticket guy and many more details of the party, but things just didn't add up. And before some of you guys say that this is a false memory or something, well, I thought that too. But when I asked both of them about it, they both clearly remember being there. Some of my friends who were there also remember seeing them, but also there are others that came to the party who didn't remember them. Right now, I don't have any pictures or videos, but I'm looking. If I find anything, I'll keep you guys updated. If you have any ideas, please let me know what you guys think. Number 5 I have a very vivid memory of a large house engulfed in flames in the middle of a huge field. I remember gigantic flames leaping up the walls as its picture windows bursted from pressure, flinging grass everywhere. The smoke smelled like a charcoal grill, yet at the same time like chemicals. Hanging out of the second floor window, a young blonde woman in a white nightgown was waving her arms back and forth frantically. Her mouth was moving like she was screaming, but I couldn't hear her over a high-pitched whistle. This memory is so vivid that I even remember the heat on my face from the flames. A couple of years ago, when I was 12 years old, I asked my mom, Hey, do you remember that time we watched that house burn in the middle of that field? My mom's skin turned completely white. Apparently, when I was three years old, my stepdad took my mom and I out for a drive in the country. He stopped in front of a wheat field and was about to tell a story before I interrupted him. Look mom, look at that house. It's on fire. My dad's sister, who was 12 at the time, had seen the same house except burned to ashes and surrounded by old-timey fire trucks and police cars the previous week. But no one believed her. Until I said I saw the house burning as well. The story that my stepdad was about to tell was about a house that exploded from a gas leak sometime around the 1920s killing a woman and her children who were sleeping inside the house. Shortly after the explosion, firefighters tried to save the woman who was hanging out of her bedroom window, but she couldn't jump due to debris trapping her leg. They went inside, but couldn't find her. They tried listening for her screams, but nothing could be heard over the loud high-pitched whistle from the blown gas line. By the time they came back outside, she was already hanging limp out of the window, now dead. Eventually, they put out the fire, but by then the house was burnt to ashes. After everything was cleaned up, a nearby farmer purchased the land from the woman's grieving husband. 
To this day, it remains an undisturbed wheat field. I honestly believe that whatever happened in that field was traumatic enough to leave an impression or tear the veil of a timeline. So basically I believe we either saw a traumatic memory of those people on some sort of loop, or we saw into another timeline because the tragedy of this event tore the veil that usually doesn't allow us to see into other timelines. In either case, it gives me and my family the chills to this day. Number 6 So I just realized to my surprise, I haven't been gawking at my phone all morning. I went to check something and noticed I didn't have it, and went tearing apart the house. The first place I check is where it would most likely be if I didn't use it all morning, my bed. I clear off the bed entirely, and no phone. I pick up my blanket and do that untangle shake. Grab two corners, shake it out flat, grab the other two, shake it out again. It's light. I bundle it up and toss it onto the empty bed. I look all over my house and still, no phone. I go back to my room, look around the bed again and the charger area, shake the blanket again, still nothing. Then I remember that Google has that magic button that makes your phone ring to find it. Phone starts ringing, I follow the sound back to my room to the bed with only the shaken out blanket. I pick up the blanket and it's heavy. I could feel my phone in it. I didn't even move the blanket two inches and my phone comes tumbling out like it was just gently sitting on top. I shook it out flat several times, felt the weight of nothing, then suddenly it's there loosely on top after I made it ring. This is probably the second or third time I've seen something like this happen where it doesn't exist until I strictly need it to, but this is something else. I've never witnessed proof with my own eyes that it was guaranteed not there, then to even feel a totally different weight a moment later in that exact fully inspected spot. I always thought what most people think. <laughs> it's probably just ghosts moving my crap around. Good thing ghosts aren't real, right? But now, after this whole situation, this crap feels more like a video game. It literally didn't seem to exist until I sent an interaction its way. I'm not really sure what to think. Definitely weird. Number 7 This happened to me almost 10 years ago when I was in high school, so the details might be a bit fuzzy. Back then, I was dating a boy. We had most of our classes together and were basically joined at the hip, because high school dating, you know how it goes. We were sitting together in class one day when my boyfriend's phone started vibrating with a new notification. He pulled out his phone to check the message and his expression immediately changed to concern. He had just received a more or less longish text from my number that said I was growing tired of our relationship and I was breaking up with him. The message even contained the nickname we used for each other, which wasn't something really typical for couples. He was definitely weirded out because I had been sitting next to him when his phone received the notification, and he hadn't seen me typing at any point. I, of course, had no recollection of ever writing or sending that message, much less that moment. Yet, it seemed like something I would have written, being very close to my writing style and using words and phrases I often use. Plus, we used to fight a lot back then, and it wasn't far from similar things I'd said in the past. I did immediately check my messages, and I don't know if this makes it more or less weird, but the same text he had received appeared in my conversation with him, timestamped to when we were sitting in class. Again, however, there was no way I could have possibly typed it, much less sent it. Nothing similar ever happened to me or us again, but still to this day, we can't explain where the text came from. Number 8 This happened a few years ago. I went to a festival with my girlfriend at the time and some friends. It was the first day of the festival and when the night came we were already tired from being on this long trip. So we decided to chill in our tents instead of going full party mode. Morning comes we wake up super fresh and head to the dance floor for the first time. I go to the bathroom and tell my girl to wait for me. When I'm in the bathroom, I get the I've been here before feeling. I know what's written on the walls, I know the cracks on the tiles, etc. I feel dizzy and I enter in some kind of dream state. 
Suddenly, although I was sitting, my point of view is of someone who is standing and trying to open the door. I can't. Everything is blurry and the lights start to behave in a very weird way. I'm having a super bad trip and before I manage to open the door, I fall on the ground. This memory just lasts a couple of seconds. I'm still sitting on the toilet and my legs and arms feel like jello. I finish my business, get open the door, and head outside. I meet my girl and I start by telling her, Wow, I just had a super deja vu in the toilet. I felt that I died in there last night. I felt like I died in there last night. Her eyes start popping and she tells me right away that she dreamt about this last night. I'm really glad that we decided to stay in the tent and chill. Number 9 I took a really hard news slash soft news journalism class in college where one of the assignments was to write an obituary for one of my grandparents. The professor told us to write it on a deceased grandparent, but if all of your grandparents were still alive, we had to choose one. In my case, all of my grandparents were alive. I procrastinated the assignment until the night before it was due because it seemed like a dumb assignment to me. Scramming for an easy grandparent to write about, I gave my mom a call and asked her for some basic biographical information about my maternal grandfather who was still alive. As we were talking about my grandpa's career, my mom couldn't recall the name of one of the companies he worked at. She then started lecturing me about waiting until the last minute to write the assignment because it was late. 10.30 p.m. my grandpa's time. However, she said she would give him a call to see if he was still awake and able to answer that question once my assignment was due the following morning. When my mom called my grandpa, my grandma answered the phone in a panic. My grandma frantically explained that the paramedics had just arrived and were performing CPR on my grandpa because he had stopped breathing and passed out. My mom was able to stay on the phone with my grandma until they took my grandpa to the hospital, where he was then declared dead. In the time my mom had been on the phone talking about my grandpa's obituary, he was dying and out of the blue at that. He had been otherwise healthy considering his age. We ended up using the obituary I wrote for that writing assignment as his actual obituary. It still really freaks me out whenever I think about the timing. Number 10. This happened not long after 9-11. It was a Friday and I got up to go to class and had one of those mornings. Broke a glass getting something to drink, tripped over something going to my car, was late to class due to a wreck on the way there, etc. While at school we heard about a plane crash. Something about the wings blowing off. I went to work then went home. The very next morning my roommate wakes me up asking if I'm skipping class today. After he convinces me it is still Friday, I get up and go to class after noticing the glass I broke isn't broke. On the way there, I pass the same wreck in the same spot. All day long, I wait to hear about the plane crash, but it never happens, and it ends up being a kind of normal day. The next day, they arrest the shoe bomber, and I've often wondered if someone rewound that day to stop him, and somehow I didn't reset with it. I don't know. To this day, it really freaks me out and I don't know what to think. Number 11. I'm not sure if anyone will believe me or not, but screw it, here it goes. When I was in high school, my best friend Phil killed himself. I never really knew the specifics, all I know is that he shot himself at one of the local parks. Fast forward six years or so and I'm asleep in my bed next to my ex-wife. I'm having a fairly normal dream. I was at a store doing something or another. I can't really remember the specifics of the beginning of the dream. What I do remember, however, is running into Phil in the store. When I first saw him, everything got super weird. He actually looked like Phil. Not like in most dreams where people will be certain people but not look like them. He actually looked like Phil. He looked at me and smiled and said, Hey man. At the moment, the dream got crystal clear. I asked him if it was really him and he said it was. He told me we were going to hang out for a bit and after that, the dream got super lucid. 
He showed me how to make stuff, and generally we just screwed around doing random dream things. Suddenly I realized that my dream was coming to an end. I turned to him and asked him if I was about to wake up. He said yes, and said that he had fun coming to hang out with me for a bit. I don't know why, but I asked, So why'd you do it, man? Why'd you kill yourself? The way he answered chilled me to my core. Not necessarily what he said, just how he said it. He then replied with, My girlfriend cheated on me, man. He said it like it was a question that he'd answered already before. Like when someone asks you what your job was, you've responded with the exact same sentence so many times that it just falls off your tongue effortlessly. Except I had known his girlfriend and they were the kind of couple that everyone admired and hoped to be. I said, Sophie? Sophie cheated on you? His eyes lit up like he realized he was talking to someone that actually knew him in life. He then said, yeah man, Sophie cheated on me. We gave each other a hug and he wished me well. I woke up and felt super strange. It was somewhere around 2 or 3 in the morning. I closed my eyes and then thought to myself, Phil, if that was really you, I need you to give me a sign. Not too long after that thought finished, my phone started ringing. It came across as an unknown number and only rang twice. I knew I wasn't dreaming anymore because my ex-wife woke up and sleepily asked me who was trying to call me so late. To this day, whenever I think about that story, I always get chills. To my best friend Phil, Wherever you are, I truly hope you're in a better place, and I hope I get the chance to meet you again someday in the afterlife. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you have your own personal scary story, be sure to submit that to my subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash southerncannibal or to my email at southerncannibal at gmail.com. I'm always looking for new stories. And before we bring this video to a close, I just want to shout out all of my $5 or more patrons, as well as my $3 or more patrons featured on screen. Shout out to Babe Lincoln, Beth A, Kate E, Celeste S, Ellie S, Emily W, Heather B, Howard R, Jacqueline W, Jazzy G, Jonathan C, Lori J, Matthew B, Michael G, Random Randy, Steph L, Tammy Yes, and Terry H. Thank all of you so much for supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it more than you know. And if any of you would like to join these awesome people and also become a patron, head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash southerncannibal. Thank you everyone, and have a good one. And remember to always stay.